So Aqua Yagami and a pinup model walk into a school. That's about all I have. I don't. I have a setup. I don't really have a punchline. But when Oshino Ko is as good as it is, it doesn't really need a punchline because every episode just keeps improving on the formula, and really, it only keeps getting better. Like it seriously isn't an exaggeration. These four episodes which, yes, episode one was like the equivalent of four episodes, give or take, so we have watched a lot more than just four episodes, but still, the point remains that this show is pure quality. We're getting a taste of what the psycho energy could look like from Aqua if he ever does find his biological father. Obviously, the DNA didn't come up to what he wanted, but now he has a new lead. He has to do some work, of course, but ultimately... He's going to keep getting these bones thrown at him, and I think when you look at his acting in that TV series, that stalker, that the knife swing, everything, like, that is who he could be if he came into contact with his father, and to see a school that's just pure talent, whether it's pinup models, whether it's actors, whether it's streamers, whether it's idols up and coming, like, they have all these different people that a majority of the school is just talented and beautiful. And the interesting dynamics and relationships that will blossom as all these more intense plot lines are kind of strung together, really, Ocean Co. is going to be one of, if not the best shows of this year. And season two will probably just continue to improve the formula when we eventually get it, because let's not kid ourselves, they're gonna make a season two. Full live reaction to this wonderful episode is available on my Patreon. If you do want to see my full uncut thoughts, I really like this. This show just, I love what they're able to do with someone like Aqua as a character. They could have easily just made him someone who just felt like a psychopath in the making or someone who's a lot too nice to make it in his plot for revenge, but they balance that middle ground of seeing inside the darkest depths of his mind and how far he would go to avenge his mother's death, but also show just how much of a good guy he is deep down inside for the general folk. And I love how, you know, because I'm not the first one to say, like, man, it got that Light Yagami vibe going on, but that's not an insult by any means. Like, Light Yagami is one of the most memorable anime characters for a reason, and I mean, at the rate someone like Aqua's going, he's gonna have his own potato chip scene before it's over. Like, this show is fantastic, and I love the fact that when you look at this horrible show that was literally just made as a commercial for a popular manga... As the mangaka herself says, it's a completed series, There's you can't boost the popularity, so they're basically going to half-ass it at best. And to see how someone like Aqua, he still thinks he doesn't have the talent. He does have the talent. I think a lot of it is fear, because obviously, you know, Mother died with her holding him, and you know, just the fact that, like, that's going to hurt anyone, whether it's your second life or not. So ultimately, the fear of not being able to live up to Mother's expectations on top of just feeling like there is that little bit of self-hatred, like he's not good enough, we can tell that it's more than just using the things in his in his field of view, whether it's puddles, whether it's insulting a man so he'll get riled up to be the right character for a scene. He is talented, but of course, it would take him a long time to ever admit that out loud, if ever. But as we can see, he doesn't really need to admit it out loud, given the fact that he's absolutely kicking ass. I thought initially, if we rewind episode 3, they cut the scene when basically a raindrop like hit melt on the face, right? And they're like, okay, cut, because that wasn't part of the scene. Those little atmospheric touches go a long way to immerse a scene, and for a scene that's literally about confessing love and fighting off a stalker, it was literally the perfect environment, so I was really happy that at least one person in the production team said, no, this is actually going to make it a lot better. So what they end up doing, because he's like, okay, I may be a shitty actor, but at the very least, I can make everything work. So he uses the puddles that he walks in to kind of cement his entrance. It's super ominous. He then walks up to our boy and just says, wow, without the makeup and without all the editing, you're actually not that attractive. Piss is melt off to the absolute point where he actually feels like he's defending our girl Kana's honor, when in fact he's just upset that you insulted his physical appearance. And the way he plays off of all these little things to build a scene, and the big punchline is of course our girl doing what she does best, that crying on command, it turned what was the most mediocre, forgettable show that was getting one star reviews on every episode, the final episode goes out on such a bang. The two most important things for a show is the beginning and the end, because the thing that people will continue like, hey, are we going to keep checking it out? The first impressions. And even if a majority of a show or movie sucks, if it does have an ending that's memorable, honestly, a lot of people will just talk about that and will ignore the rest of the trash that was the main product. And seriously, our boy came in clutch, and I love the little touches that they do about the flirtatiousness, because... 
basically the final scene for her is basically she has to have this look of like falling in love right and we know who she's looking at at the end and that's our boy aqua and the way it really did feel like someone falling in love i mean that scene literally cemented like damn he was okay before but whatever he just did like i need to see like this is the boy that crushed me as a child like this is the kid who stole the spotlight and damn if he didn't do it again. And I really like what they did there. And when it came to like the rest of the episode in terms of kind of like progressing more into the school dynamic, I like what they're doing. They're getting us accustomed of who will be like the main supporting cast, whether it's basically Frill, who apparently if you Google beautiful girl, she's the one who will pop up according to his sister. I mean, she was flustered. She was crushing hard. And I mean, I love how we literally go from her just staring down at the G cups, like no shame at all, googling, oh, you're a pinup model in the middle of class. I love how Minami was just like, just so like, bruh, you can't do that. I mean, she's faking an accent to kind of like fit in a bit better. Like, there's a little bit of mystery here and there on why characters maybe are behaving certain ways, but at the end of the day, they all are playing the role they need to, and this school is just full of talented and beautiful people. But the fact that Ruby goes from just so casually staring at a girl's chest to them being like this is the definition of beautiful girl i love how she goes from criticizing her brother for not being able to make friends to then immediately feeling like the outcast when her brother goes over to literally beautiful girl google search and says hey frill be nice to my sister it's just some great dynamics and just bonds in general and i think they have a really fun supporting cast to work off of obviously the thing i'm most excited for is what's going to happen with obviously he started with the DNA test with the cigarettes didn't come back to what he needs. And of course, it's kind of starts getting a little heated like, oh, how would you know Ice Face so well? Obviously kind of getting the murderous intents and maybe he actually is someone I need to worry about to then casually dropping, oh, there was actually someone she was meeting that day or and, and things like that. So now he kind of has a hook, line and singer, but this man's all about busy. He doesn't really care too much, but he's not going to do things for free if he can make money off of someone. And I like what they're doing overall with the plot. How they're keeping the drama there, but also keeping it relatively comfy, such as, okay, we're not really getting anywhere with Ruby's up-and-coming idol group, so what can we do? No pretty girls are really going to want to work with us when they're going to go to the main agencies. If we steal someone from an agency, obviously that's just going to cause drama. Well, I know someone, insert Kana, and honestly, they're they're starting to get somewhere with that as well. I really think Ocean Co. is an absolute breath of fresh air, whether it's the realistic take on the idol industry or how they even handled the mangaka side of things. It was a really short moment, but the fact that the intro scene is literally her sleeping on the floor because if she sleeps on the floor, she'll only sleep maybe four hours and will wake up naturally. If she sleeps in a comfy bed, then obviously she'll sleep the day away. Or the fact of how they talk about how manga adaptations and just a lot of them are just simply commercials and you can't really expect much, but to see her cry actual tears of joy after probably crying, uh, I guess I'm happy it's here, but it's pretty goddamn awful. I mean, you just really felt like this is a show that is brutally honest. At face value, a lot of the scenes, people might just say, oh, it's just a school series, or it's, oh, it's just a psycho series because this guy wants to kill someone. But there's so much more. There's so much more to all these moments, and whether it's the brutal take of the idol industry to even the simple moments with a mangaka talking about her work being adapted, and at the very least just being happy there's an adaptation of some sort. I mean, I just love what they're able to accomplish with this show, but... Thoughts and feelings yourself down below, a drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, ring that bell of course so you can get notified when I upload on the channel, and like I mentioned we do have a full live reaction available on my Patreon, we give video shoutouts as well, so if any of that interests you consider checking it out. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.